This week's video is brought to you by HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com and use the code POLYPHONIC12 to get 12 free meals, including free shipping today. All things must end. From singular lives to the greatest empires, finality is the one constant in the world. And because of that truth, endings have been a place of meditation and reflection for artists of all sorts throughout history. As a species, we have spent centuries probing into the ending of lives and the ending of loves. And in 1966, a songwriter named Jim Morrison partook in this long tradition. After the end of his relationship with the beauty queen named Mary Werbelow, Morrison started to write a breakup piece. But something changed in his writing process. The song morphed from a simple breakup song into a dark, drug-addled beast that dove into strange cosmology, ancient myth, and looked mortality straight in the face. This is the end, beautiful friend. The first verse of the end is the most literal, dealing with Jim Morrison's reaction to his breakup with Werbelow, a breakup that was caused by his own paranoia due to heavy drinking and LSD use. And that paranoia comes through in the lyrics, which have a kind of apocalyptic darkness to them. Morrison might be singing about the end of a relationship, but he's also singing about the end of the world. I'll never look into your and by the last lines of the verse, we're already starting to tread into Jim Morrison's famous philosophical territory. Can you picture what will be so Many endings bring with them new beginnings. In the case of romance, this can mean a sort of freedom. In the case of life, this can mean crossing the final threshold into the great unknown. In The Doors' early days, the end was, fittingly, their set closer. The band would extend the song into a long instrumental jam, creating psychedelic soundscapes. Like much of the psychedelic music of the day, the end drew on Indian classical music for its sound. Robbie Krieger's electric guitar imitates a sitar, plucking on an ambiguous diatonic scale. Ray Manzarek's organ takes the place of the tambura, providing a droning bed for the piece. And John Densimore's drumline is less like a rock beat and more like the rhythms of the Indian tabla. This open instrumentation gave Jim Morrison space to ad lib poetry on top of the song. Lost in a romance, of pain. According to The Doors Illustrated, Morrison said the song became a little more serious each time the band played it. But even these serious meanings can be difficult to parse. In an interview with The Rolling Stone, Jim Morrison said the song was sufficiently complex and universal in its imagery that it could be almost anything you want it to be. Even so, I think there are clear themes to be found in the lyrics of the end. Waiting for the sun. One of the biggest of these is the transition from endings to new beginnings. The liminal space in between being and not being, between death and rebirth, and the infinite, ongoing cycle that runs directly through that space. In exploring this theme, Morrison pulled from myriad sources, including classical literature, indigenous spirituality, and the archetypal American ideals of the frontier. Ride the King's Highway. The images of highways and gold mines are pulled from America's westward expansion, a mythology built around the story of heading dauntless into the unknown. Ride the highway west. But this is paired with ideas taken from the cultures who lived in those supposedly unknown lands long before the doctrines of manifest destiny. The snake. 
The snake is an important symbol in a number of North American indigenous cultures. In Hopi traditions, the snake carries prayers to the underworld, where it can speak to the gods. And for the Mixtec people, it was a symbol of death and rebirth because of its ability to shed skin. But snakes appear in other mythology as well. Perhaps one of the most recognizable is the Ouroboros, the snake devouring its own tail. First seen in ancient Egypt, the Ouroboros is a symbol of fertility, death, and rebirth. In Break On Through, Jim Morrison describes his own vision of the snake. I used to see the universe as a mammoth peristaltic snake, and I used to see all the people and objects and landscapes as little pictures on the facets of its skin, its scales. Riding the snake westward is driving into the unknown, the world beyond the sunset. The west is the best. It's the passage from one life to the next. Get here, and we'll do the rest. This cycle of life, death, and rebirth is the crux of the end. And in the next lines, we get another symbol for this journey. The blue bus is calling us. In Break On Through, Ray Manzarek gave his interpretation of this symbol, suggesting that it could be seen as the solar boat from Egyptian mythology. When you died, you got in the solar boat and went wherever you went. That whole big journey after a kind of death is in the solar boat. Well, blue being a heavenly color, blue being associated with mysticism and trips, it's all the trips you could possibly imagine. The blue bus. And it was a trip of a particular sort that gave the end its most infamous section, the spoken Oedipal piece. The killer awoke before dawn. On August 21st, 1966, Jim Morrison failed to show up for a Doors show at the Whiskey A Go Go. He took a face from the ancient gallery and he walked on down the hall. As the legend goes, his bandmates went to his house and he greeted them with the words 10,000 mics, meaning he had taken 10,000 micrograms of LSD. He went into the room where his sister lived. Nevertheless, the band hauled Morrison to the show. Midway through the set, he announced that they would play the end, and that's when the acid paid a visit to his brother and then he... As the band was jamming, Morrison began to improvise a strange spoken word piece on stage. And it came to a door. The dark piece followed a killer walking through his home, and as it progressed, it morphed into a retelling of one of Morrison's favorite pieces of classical literature, Oedipus Rex. Father, yes son, I want to kill you. And as the song reached its climax, Morrison spoke the words, Mother, I want to fuck you. Mother, I want to. Following that statement, the band swelled into what Manzarek would later call an orgy of madness. They played faster and faster as Morrison spun around on stage and the crowd went wild. The performance caught the doors fired from their job as the Whiskey A Go Go's house band, but it marked the beginning of their ascension to the rock pantheon. Three days later, the band would record the song in a series of sessions that were just as intense. They recorded the song by candlelight late in the evening, and Morrison was once again tripping on acid, allowing him to deliver the Oedipal lines with the same desperation. According to Mojo Magazine, the sessions ended with Morrison lying on the floor, mumbling, fuck the mother, kill the father, before throwing a TV through the control room window. Come on, baby, take a chance with us and meet me at the back of the blue bus. Do not blue the Oedipal lines in the end have understandably been the subject of much controversy over the years, but neither Morrison nor the band intended them to be taken at face value. Instead, they were metaphors reflecting the themes that Morrison sung throughout the song, death and rebirth. In John Densmore's autobiography, he recalled a discussion he had with Morrison about the lyrics during the recording session. Jim just kept saying over and over, kill the father, fuck the mother, and essentially it boils down to this, kill all those things in yourself which are instilled in you and not of yourself. They are alien concepts which are not yours, they must die. Fuck the mother is very basic, and it means get back to essence. So what Jim says at the end of the Oedipus section, which is essentially the same thing that the classic says, is kill the alien concepts, get back to reality. 
the end of alien concepts and the beginning of personal concepts. This fits in well with the themes of death and rebirth, and can even fit into the song's breakup origins. In Break On Through, Morrison summed it all up. The end is about three things. Sex, death, travel. Sex is the primal, life-giving force, the action responsible for all of our existence. And it fits lyrically into the song with the phallic image of the snake, as well as Morrison's manic shouts in the climax. Death is everywhere throughout the end, represented in its grim musicality, in Morrison's monologue about the killer. And travel is the journey between the two riding the blue bus westward into the unknown. And like the cycles that Morrison sings about, the song loops back, ending at the same place that it began. This is the end. Yeah. Morrison refers to the end as his only friend, the one constant, the one sure thing in life. My only friend, the end. To this day, The End remains one of the most oft-discussed songs in The Doors' entire catalog. It's a song that can be gazed at from any number of angles, none of which provide a full answer as to its meaning. It's The Doors at their most raw, their darkest, and their strangest. And it helps set them up to become one of the most unique forces in the psychedelic rock movement. But more than that, it's a song that allows us to reflect and philosophize on our own life. It makes us think of the journeys that we will all take. And it helps us look at the oncoming endings that are inevitable in all of our lives. This is the One ending that always fills me with dread is the end of the day, when I need to figure out what to cook for dinner. And that's why I'm really stoked to say that this week's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. HelloFresh is an amazing meal kit service that delivers delicious, healthy meals to your door every week. They cut out the stress of meal planning and give you easy, fun recipes that you can make in half an hour or even less if you take their quick and easy options. Not only are these meals fantastic, they can also save you time in grocery shopping and help you eat more sustainably. Because everything is sent out in pre-portioned ingredients, you only get the amount that you need, so there's far less food waste, and almost all the packaging is either recyclable or made from pre-recycled material. Over the past week, I've been cooking with HelloFresh, and honestly, it's been great. Rather than falling into the cycle of cooking the same easy meals over and over again, I've had diverse, healthy meals that my wife and I have really enjoyed cooking together. If this sounds like something you want to try, you can go to HelloFresh.com and use the code POLYPHONIC12 to get 12 free meals, including free shipping. So if you want to try it out, there's really no risk to you. Go to HelloFresh.com and enter POLYPHONIC12 to get that deal. I honestly recommend you give it a shot. Cooking their meals has been a genuinely enjoyable experience and a delicious experience for me. And also, if you check them out, it's a great way to help support my channel. So thank you all so much for watching.